This class were the first British battleships designed and built to the terms of the Washington Naval Treaty from the start. The class consisted of five ships and was designed to replace the Revenge class in British service. The ships were King George V, Prince of Wales, Duke of York, Howe and Anson. Design work for the new battleship class started in 1928, as the original holiday from new battleships as a result of the Washington Treaty was due to expire in 1931. However, the London Treaty in 1930 extended this holiday to 1937, so the process was put on hold again until 1935. Various alternative designs with 14, 15 and 16 inch guns were considered, but with a displacement limit of 35,000 tonnes it was not felt that a ship with 16 inch guns could have enough speed and armour at the same time. With a design speed of about 27 knots, the design that was chosen used three triple turrets with new 15 inch guns, a pair forward and one aft. Due to the fact that the Colorado and Nagato classes had 16-inch guns and other newer ships were using modern 15-inch guns, the emphasis on armour was much greater than in previous designs. However, the Second London Naval Treaty was coming up and there was a desire to limit the calibre of naval guns. Since these are the longest term item for battleship construction and it would look stupid to insist on one calibre as a limit whilst building ships with a larger calibre of gun, the guns were downgraded to 14-inch weapons. To compensate for this, it was intended to use three quadruple turrets in the same positions to give a 12-gun broadside. However, as it turned out, this would still have put the ships over the displacement limit and the super-firing forward turret was changed to a twin. Therefore, the final armament of the ship consisted of 10 guns of 14-inch calibre, with a quadruple turret and a twin turret forward, and a quadruple turret aft. The secondary battery consisted of eight turrets with twin 5.25 inch dual purpose guns, and the anti-aircraft battery consisted of eight octuple 40mm pom-pom guns, and four mine-laying rocket launchers. Between refits and war experience, this eventually grew to include a further 10 40mm Bofors guns, and 36 20mm weapons. There were some concerns over the capability of the 14-inch guns as the broadside weight was now much less than the original 15-inch design. As a result, the shells were given an unusually large bursting charge so that any hit that did make it through enemy armour would cause substantial damage, compared, comparable to a much larger shell. In the trials of war, the gun proved surprisingly effective, penetrating the 14-inch thick conning tower of the Bismarck repeatedly. When the escalator clause of the London Treaty was invoked to allow 16-inch guns, the US paused construction to switch over to the new and larger guns in their designs, but the delay in redesign was thought to be too long for the UK and the ships went ahead. Their thicker armour meant that even a ship with larger guns would have to get closer to hurt them, and the more heavily armed ship would have to sacrifice its own armour protection, so both sides would be able to hurt each other at similar ranges, if both ships had been built to the treaty limits. Of course, Japan had other ideas in that department. The secondary guns were initially somewhat disappointing. They were very effective weapons, but issues with slow turrets and the ammunition being just a bit too heavy for easy manual loading limited their effectiveness. This was improved with revised turrets and loading systems in later ships. Similarly, the quadruple turrets of the main armament had a lot of problems that were only gradually solved. The firepower of the Prince of Wales and King George V against the Bismarck was significantly reduced because of this, whereas in the later fight between Duke of York and Scharnhorst, these problems had been much reduced. The armour protection of the King George V class was extensive, and they were the most heavily protected battleships in the world when they were launched, with only the Yamato class exceeding them in terms of battleships actually constructed. The deck armour was thickest over the magazines, with a total thickness of just over 9 inches, a 1.25 inch thick weather deck, a main armoured deck 6 inches thick, and a 1.5 inch splinter deck above the shell rooms. The rest of the ship was generally protected by between 5.5 and 6 inches of deck armour. The main armour belt extended from the main armour deck to finish 15 feet below the deep water line, to protect against normal and diving shells. Next to the magazines, the belt was 15 inches thick and 14 inches elsewhere. 
armour protection was even better than the thickness of the armour would indicate, due to improved qualities in the metallurgy of British armour, which was not replicated outside of Germany at the time, who had developed similar techniques on their own. This meant, depending on which tests and figures you use, the armour was anything from 8 to 25% more effective than other contemporary armour. Using the most common figures given, this equates to an equivalent of about 17 inches of standard armour over the magazines, which is actually thicker than the Yamato class, offset only by the fact that the Japanese belt was inclined instead of vertical. The underwater protection system was complex and was designed to protect against a thousand pound warhead, which it had successfully resisted in full scale trials. Unfortunately for the Prince of Wales, three out of the four hits which sank it hit outside the system. The one which did was successfully resisted, but one of the others hit a propeller shaft, and that was pretty much it for that ship. But of course, that's the subject for another video. All five ships would see combat during World War II, with King George V and Prince of Wales being involved for the hunt for the battleship Bismarck. Following this, the Prince of Wales was sent to Singapore, where it would be attacked by Japanese bombers whilst on a mission along with the battlecruiser Repulse, and sunk with the loss of 327 of its men. Shortly after this, King George V, Duke of York, Howe and Anson provided escort duty to convoys bound for Russia. In late 1942, Duke of York was sent to Gibraltar to, as the new flagship of Force H and supported the Allied landings in North Africa in November. Anson and Howe would also provide cover for multiple convoys bound for Russia from late 1942 to March 1943, when Howe provided convoy cover for the last time. In May 1943, King George V and Howe were moved to Gibraltar in preparation for Operation Husky. The two ships would bombard Trapani naval base and Favignana in July, and also provided cover for Operation Avalanche from the 7th of September to the 14th of September. During this time, Duke of York and Anson participated in Operation Gearbox, which was designed to draw attention away from Operation Husky. Duke of York was also heavily involved in the action that sank the German battleship Scharnhorst on 25th of December 1943. In March 1945, King George V and Howe were sent to the Pacific as part of Task Force 57, where they led a bombardment of Japanese air facilities in the Ryukyu Islands and other enemy positions across the Pacific. Duke of York and Anson were also dispatched to the Pacific, but would arrive too late to participate in the hostilities. On the 17th of August, Duke of York and Anson accepted the surrender of Japanese forces occupying Hong Kong, and along with King George V, they would be present for the official Japanese surrender in Tokyo Bay. Following the end of World War II, the ships were phased out of service, kept in reserve as part of the UK's commitment to the NATO naval forces, before a change in doctrine led to the scrapping of reserve fleets by the European navies, and by 1957 all of the ships had been sold off for scrap a process that was completed by 1958. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.